Fidel Rodriguez, The Room of Knowledge. Welcome, everyone, to The Room of Knowledge. I'm Fidel Rodriguez, or Fidel Rodriguez, here with a good brother, a brother that I've known for a very long time, yeah. Mr. Richard Cabral. Yeah. What's happening, my brother? Yeah, thank you, bro. Thank you for hey, having me here. No, thank you. Welcome to The Room of Knowledge, mm. uh, where we're going down that red road <laughs> trying to figure it out right <gasps> going down the red road the rabbit hole whatever <laughs> yeah no it's good bro thank you you know i you know and it's just a beautiful thing to to see the prayer manifest like that you know we've been talking about this for quite some time you know and to yeah. actually see it you know here you know it's, it's a beautiful thing yeah you know it's interesting coming to mind i remember interviewing chuck d years ago um when i was much younger and he told me something that always stuck and he said you know fidel the more i know the more i don't know that's it that's it yeah and that's how it, it just seems to be manifesting more and more right right yeah and i think it's because we come from a society where you know you you're, you're you, success lies in in what you know and where you got it from and talking talking mm -hmm. talking right reading 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 and i think um books are amazing obviously we're here in the room of knowledge like that but i think that there's a certain point where like it it, it, it could stop you right or it could hinder you or it could hurt you right and i think that's kind of where we're at right now and what we're talking about like the more you know the more you kind of don't know right yeah. and i think that where our life has came is is really um manifesting that prayer not in a in just a literal sense, but in, in a physical sense. Mm. Let me let me take it back real quick. You said success. Right. What does that mean to you? Well, you what it means to me is different from what I was taught. Mm. What, and and we'll break it down for the audience that what what success is is um to what you're taught that it's supposed to be it's supposed to be uh uh physical all external things right all whether you know it, it's a home that you uh that that you get whether it's a, new, a brand new car whether it's money in the bank whether it's a career whether it's a a a, 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 um, a college education from a, a, a you know this, this high level um institution right mm -hmm. so it's all external things that they tell you is success right but i think what you what 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 uh what i came you know because I'm, I'm i'm gonna try to only speak from my experience yeah. right because yeah. where i think a lot of people get it me messed up is that they speak from 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 others right mm -hmm. but from what i found out that success is not just that right because i have witnessed and i have attained that success that people told me that that's what we're striving that's that's what i should strive for right and ultimately like it, it doesn't bring you happiness because i believe that true success is the happiness within your soul mm. so we're talking about this image this idea of success which this culture that we're living in has right. told us is right. an illusion for sure it's an illusion right um and 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 because you see that right like if it wasn't an illusion right why would millionaires and people of of um this success right would how however we we determine they attain that why mm -hmm. would they kill themselves right mm. why would they why would they become alcoholics mm. why would they why why would they continue to go down a, a negative um spiral right if if they had every if if they had everything they needed right so money power that doesn't bring you true success because you're you're, you're doing negative negative stuff, right? And not and you're hurting yourself and you're hurting people that you um, supposedly love. So that's interesting because what we're deeming success or mm. we've been taught it because that, I'm glad you brought that point up because I know people of wealth, right, that have heroin addictions alcoholics, right, um, um, marriage separations, right, right? all yeah. all we could that's everything everything under the right so where does this idea of what we have this image of like oh i want that brand new car uh -huh. i want the new house uh -huh. etc where where do those ideas come from you were trained like a freaking dog right mm. and, and and you could you go down to because we we're not we don't live in europe right we're not we don't live in mexico we live in america so we could really um see the uh, american historical context mm. right on that everything that you, that you're given today on on it was was came from a source right and that people fed you that that story right mm. you are living a story that somebody else fed you right you are trained 
since a very young child on what you should like, who you should like, where you should be, everything you are trained, you are trained, you are trained, whether it's through media, whether it's through school, whether it's through your own parents sometimes, mm. right? So you every a child doesn't grow up with these thoughts of what success is. A child um learns what these thoughts are. Yeah. So we're all products of that. So so yeah, I mean where what whatever era you were born. I'm I'm from I was born in 83, right? So what was hot at that time growing up as a child? Lucky Charms, Pepsi. You know what I'm saying? Your t- McDonald's, yeah, um yeah. Pizza Hut, right? Um Shaquille O'Neal like so everything you're you're trained. So I only could speak of that, but it, that that's what it is, right? That you are taught what what success and what you should like um based on where you came from and the years that you came from bro that's a trip man you're you're oh man the four agreements right right he talked miguel uh ruiz don miguel ruiz talks about the domestication of our minds mm, mm. that's what you're talking that's about it. right that's now that's it right? yeah like yeah. dogs dots right that dots that 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 you're given to by another source right in that and, and, and ultimately that, that that if you get a college education and you get straight A's and you go to this and, and, and you um um have to um either you get a, a a scholarship or whether you get a loan to go to this prestigious school that everything's gonna be all right. That is the American dream. That is the American plan, right? But what that does is is not true success and not that's not gonna give you happiness because it's not internal happiness it's it's an external mm. thing and that's the illusion that's the illusion that we have it within us that's it right that they that's want the you medicine. to think that that is it external right that to be happy that you need to do something other right you need to reach for, for out there right but what is never told is that happiness already lives in you why because you were born in happiness yes. every child black white asian is a happy child it is not from till, day one. From day one, it is not till the child sees and receives traumatic traumatic events, then that happiness starts diminishing, right? But every you already are born with ha- success and happiness. So we can say this happiness, this joy you're speaking of, is pure love. It's pure love. It's pure love. It's love. Hmm. You're born with it. Wow. I, I just listened to this podcast with this doctor. He quantified um, epigenetics. Names Dr. Bruce Lipton. Mm. He said the first seven years of a child's life is in the theta brain waves. Right. Like that's the energy coming out. It's 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 what they take you into hypnosis. Right. Theta. Right. But they're living in that world mm. the first seven years of the life. Right. They're in imagination. That's right. why they can they can play fake tea right. parties and yeah. all that stuff because they're living in that world. Mm. So it's interesting that we're living in that world of pure love and, and imagination. Right. And then we start to get indoctrinated, yeah. as yeah. you said, or domesticated, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Now, would that be what we always term about a colonized mind? For sure. For sure. That's a colonized mind. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's it's what is colonization, right? Uh, a colonization everybody i mean f- how i see it right and right. That, again that's my this is my personal take yeah, yeah, that, yeah. but how i see it is that um the the greater society the greater force of who's running the land that you're that you're in mm. is trying to have you um live in the conditions that they see that you should live in right and in order to do that things need to move right they need to move pieces in order for you to 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 live like that to hopefully live like that that is colonization right if you take back colonization colonization came to the americans um and it was a physical thing at first right but there's different layers of colonization right yeah, so yeah. after you physically colonize them take over them right so um, make them your your subjects right mm-hmm. then the generations to come the colonization colonization continues, right? Because right. that is not just a physical colonization; it is a mind and spiritual colonization. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so let's so we're talking about colonization, but what I want to do is bring it back. So those of you that are listening, uh, good friend, good human being, I want to say mm. of pure love, Richard Cabral. Um, he is an amazing human being. He is an actor. He is a poet. He is an organizer. Uh, he is, you know, he is my friend. Mm. And I want you to take me back a little bit. Right. I want you to take me back to Montebello. Mm. I want you because 
where you're at now right is right not where you for were sure before. for sure for sure like so uh, you know i was born in the 80s and like i come from um mexican american uh, family my dad was born in Zacatecas and my mom was a, a first generation american right born in east l.a so um broken home you know broken tra- trauma has been in my life since you know who knows how long right but my grandfather was an alcoholic so that's all that's the the recollections that i have right those yeah. are the physical um memories that i have is that my father my grandfather's relationship with my mother and and my my uncles and my aunts right so pretty much it was a, it was a traumatic household right and all my uncles and my mother they suffered traumatic events um which ultimately um left my mom broken right in a way and so by the time i came about um my 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 dad left when i was two years old and and i was with my mom right and my dad also had his shit right you know so i end up growing generational trauma as we say right Mm -hmm. so um that was my that was my childhood right growing up in a in an abusive alcoholic um gang territory right um drugs drugs from from my mother's boyfriends and just having a traumatic childhood right and 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 so by 13 years old i'm from east los angeles the gang capital of the world right um my family has been involved in gangs since the 1970s mm. so at 13 13 years old I, I you know i would get jumped into the hood and i would not only become a gang member but i would start my years of incarceration right so from 13 years old till i was 25 every year i was incarcerated for different for different bids right yeah um and ultimately at 20 years old i fought a life sentence for an attempted murder for a gang shooting in east la Mm. which i was facing 35 years to life um and through the grace of god i i got five years in california's um state prison Mm -hmm. and so that pushed me till i was 25 been out 12 years and now i'm here now right I believe enlightened, right? <laughs> In a way, I believed a, a, a lo- trying to be a loving man, mm. um, but also with with an amazing um successful in 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 both ways, right? Mm-hmm. Um, film and television career, right, right. So, I heard abandonment issues. Uh. I heard betrayal issues i don't know about shame i don't know right, if that's up in right, the day so right, those are three right. archetypal wounds that all cultures across the world right throughout right, the world right. carry within us right? right so i learned this other thing um from dr degroy she wrote this book called post-traumatic slave syndrome mm. and it's i mean she's uh, academics or educators use it it's called social learning theory right so you learn how to be a gang member because that's what you saw that's what yeah that, right yeah 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 okay all right interesting yeah. so with that being said we know that we learn things from our parents, from the schools, right, from the police, right, all that right, stuff. Right, right, right. So at 25, when you when you got your your bid and you had to deal with that, when did the shift happen? The aha moment, the moment of clarity. You know, I believe it's all connected, right? That like the 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 ahas, it was it ha- have been there since the beginning, right? And it wasn't, but I believe the turning point, right, that made everything switch into the frame of thought was when i was um fighting a life sentence right and like like we talk about gangs right but like there's i wasn't a drug addict right i was a Mm -hmm. gang member i was a violent young man that grew up in a violent community in a violent society right right? and that's different right so like i've seen the depths of hell right i seen more things when I was a teenager that most men and women will never see in their lifetime. Mm. You know, I seen death at its finest. And I think when you see death and when you see life literally hanging in front of you, like you have no choice but to have an aha moment, right? And whether it's what you do with your aha moment. And what I seen is that like that something happened. I should have got life. Let's just let's just start there. I shot that dude, right? I should have got life. But for the greater power, and I believe that there was a, there was a higher power, I, that didn't happen. And so that was the aha. That was the big question, right? And then when I looked at the reality that I would meet men in between the ages of 18 and 25, hundreds, literally hundreds, in the Los Angeles capital of the world, Los Angeles, um, that were getting life sentences, right? 50 years, 40 years, 30 years of life, right? And so seeing that reality and then finally going upstate 
and and seeing men that had been down 25 30 years right wow. so like that was and then seeing fucking violence bro seeing the first man get stabbed in his neck in in ironwood state prison on a prison yard right like like this is not fucking the movies right you are seeing life and death in a visceral fucking way right and like that shit stuck with me right that shit fucked me up right and i knew when i came out that that i didn't that if i had a chance to do something different please let me do something Mm. different you made that intention i made that intention like i was like god i don't know what the fuck is out there right but if there is something please like like please right like that's where i ended up at homeboy industries right homeboy industries is the is the biggest nonprofit gang organization in the world that services men and women who have been incarcerated and have um grew up in the barrio right yeah, yeah. um and and it was that right and i think what they, what do they do right they they and i think the core thing that they do is letting you um understand your trauma mm. right understand your trauma and that you as father greg says who started it that you are not your worst mistake mm. what did that mean to you when you heard that it was a fucking it was it was it was like it just hit me from the blind side right because society told me that i was my worst mistake right, right. society told me that i was gonna fucking spend the rest of my life in prison right society told me that you were only as good as where the fuck you came from right so let me roll let me roll back a minute. Uh. i want you to tell me who father greg is so Father Greg, um, you know, and titles right yeah. that he is um a Jesuit pri- priest that mm-hmm. started um Homeboy Industries thirty something years ago, mm-hmm. and um but to me like he is a man that is an embodiment of love. Mm. He is an embodiment of 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 a of a godly man, right? Like there's nothing that that i could say that that is not that right and yeah. it, is he like perfect no right but mm-hmm. like and, and and i say that because i believe that no everybody has their imperfections right like mm-hmm. just human beings yeah. that's just but like he is pure love right like through and through and there's not a thing that i or thousands of other men and women that he has he he believed in us right yeah. he believed in us when nobody believed in us right and and with that you know love i'm just gonna go back to love like that changed my life right and i believe that change that is why it changed thousands upon thousands of other men and women's life and he he he's there no matter what right and he um and and it's not just a job at homeboy industries right it's 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 an understanding that you could always come in and and have a, a a person to talk to without no judgment right right and 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 that is my that is my take of who father greg is right um but but if it wasn't for father greg i wouldn't be here with you today that's the reality yeah literally yeah yeah no i wanted you to speak on him because he does carry that energy of just pure love that's it right that's it pure love that's it and he comes into your life exactly right. when he's supposed to yeah and he says he to me is one of the most phenomenal speakers yeah i can go on youtube and pull him up and just sit there and listen to these commencement speeches he does and i'm just right. like how does he speak like that right it's right. almost like he channels yeah and he grabs you right. with his right. words right right, right. And, and and he and, and you know where people talk about gang intervention and gang culture he doesn't he never talked about it he walked it right he didn't mm-hmm. he he's you know he's he serves the people right he doesn't serve behind the desk right like like with the thousand success stories there's many there's hundreds of of children that he's buried yeah right yep. so he you know he he walks it right and is it a heavy walk yeah it's a heavy walk right and and he continues to walk that 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 hard path that most people will never even step foot close to it right and um and and i know it has to hurt them right because like because men and women die right his children die but but he keeps on he he keeps on trucking right so so yeah that's who father greg is he perseveres yeah no matter what that's it that's it so before i move into another part of your life i want to know what were the principles what were things that allowed you to elevate yourself while you're at homeboys 
right? Because you're right. working at Homeboys, but then you also have this craft right. that you're working on. But there's principles that made you go towards that. What were they? Right. Were and, and, and I think that like coming into Homeboys, because subconsciously, right, you have to understand that once you walk into Homeboys, you have surrendered to the idea that everything that I was taught was a lie, mm-hmm. right? And because in the gangster philosophy right that you're everything you're you're supposed to ride or die for the cause you're Mm -hmm. a gang member through and through right but when you come in there right you're pretty much saying like all right like this is not working so like like i'm willing to try something different right and with my thoughts and my intentions like that meant i was just opened up right like whatever you got right because i went down that rabbit hole right I and I and I did the highest I did the highest sacrifice you could do in the gang world that is put my life on the line for the gang and possibly get a life sentence right yeah. so I maxed right so when I went into homeboys it was like I was just open right and I think that was how we met right because and that this what you were what you were teaching at that time right was was that was the one, right? Like, yeah, they have gang intervention and and, and and narcotics anonymous and all these self help groups. But when when I started really understanding who where I came from, that was the game changer, right? And like I remember reading this book, Bastic Thought and Culture in prison, right? So there was already like it was already like understanding that I was much deeper than an American. Right, that I was much that there, that I was just uh, from Los Angeles, right? Like what? Like that's all anybody told me that Christopher Columbus came here and discovered America, right? Like, but when I started reading this in prison, and that's why prison was a blessing to me, mm-hmm, right? Because that's mm-hmm. when I really started identifying with my culture, right? And even though it was just the war society, right, that that the teachings were come that opened me up to everything right and i think i had all the information of of the mexica war mentality warrior mentality but then when i met you and the other teachings it really opened up and i had a, a thorough understanding like oh wow like i'm not just a mexican american from east los angeles right like so that was really like the the, the shifting gears that that really started me on this new evolution of, of enlightenment i guess we, we can call it yeah and it's interesting that you said that when you were learning this from a different mentality mm. while you were locked up mm. but there was still medicine in that right there was medicine it didn't in matter that. if you were learning now what in yeah. prison right or reading right in prison right. with a war mentality was there, there was medicine in there that, was right? medicine in it right there was definitely medicine right but it was it was my i ha- you had a be sharp right mm. in order to snap out of it because if you you do what those colonizers because now they're colonizing in their own way right they're yep. they're gaming you up right america gamed you up in their own way now yeah. this this or um organized crime is gaming you up in their own way so <laughs> if i wasn't fucking sharp bro i yeah. would have just went down that rabbit yeah. hole right and went from one extreme to the next yeah. right so yeah. or from one sucker to another sucker right yeah. so i had to really see through that in order to push through and to and to really gain um G- gain the teachings G- yeah. gain my cultural teachings yeah. so now you're talking about critical thinking right you're yeah talking about self-discipline that's it you're talking about looking behind the eyes right right Who's right really right looking behind the eyes like right they always tells us yeah and it's kind of like i don't know man it's <sighs> there's just so much stuff going on right now in my head about we're talking about the process of decolonizing right right now, right. right we're right. talking about cultura right as you know, because I'm like you, man. I, I grew up. I, I there was a time in my life where I hated being Mexican. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Being a teenager and just not knowing anything about my culture. Right. Anything. I thought all Mexicans were poor. Right. And that was just how we were. Yeah. You know what I mean? But to be surrounded, that's why I was asking about the principles. Like the culture comes in, but you had self discipline. Right. You you were disciplined. Right. Like what was well, it? As a young child, right? I had been incarcerated from when I was 13 years old. Okay. So the the like and that's a blessing within itself, right? Because the the discipline to withstand a cage mm-hmm. from a young child, mm-hmm. right? We haven't tapped into that, right? People don't talk about the traumatic experience that goes into caging a young child, right? And so in order to not cuz I'm gonna put it all I'll put it on the line right now. I if I was dead or if I had life in prison or if I was in insane asylum right now, mm-hmm. 
we could see the clear path to that, right? Right. So I had to, I had to be disciplined, bro, or or have something to be able to push me through and to even be sane right now, right? And I believe that happened as a young child, right? How did that happen? What did that happen? I don't know, right? But I'm not the only child that survived like that, right? There yeah. are thousands upon thousands of children in the United States that are caged like animals right now, and I was one of those children, one one of those kids. So I believe that. Through not wigging out or losing my shit, I did the polar opposite. Mm. And I learned discipline, right? Self-discipline, right? That no matter what you do, you're not going to fucking break me. Mm. And you're going to persevere. And I'm going to push through forward. this shit. Oh, you're going to lock me in a fucking cage? Fuck it. I ain't going to cry, right? Did That fucked me up. I'm not going to say it didn't fuck me up, right? I yeah. stuffed those emotions down, right? Yeah. yeah. But they didn't break me, right? And I think it was it was that. It was that that just that 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 started as a young child that pushed through my life, my my young adult life, that discipline. And looking back now, you can see it clearly. You could see it clearly, right? You could see it, right? And like, and and I think it's fucked up because like you have it's it's, it's systematic oppression, right? right? One system to the next system that mm-hmm. like I thought that that's what I deserved. Yeah, like, that's the fucked up. Because you've been part. taught it. Yeah. Like, oh, like, oh, this is what I deserve. Like, fuck it, right? Like, so it's all that. It's all warped, right? Because these thoughts come from a fucking, uh, 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 a sick, uh, 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 a sick system, right? A sick frame of thought, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you inhabit all this shit, right? And it's fucking layered. It's nasty. It's beautiful. It's, it's all that shit mixed wrapped into one. Yeah. And now you're fucking 25 at home, boys. And you're like, it's a big old fucking thing of yarn. And you're like, fuck, how do I fucking untangle this shit? Yeah. That's what life is, bro. Mm-hmm. That's what life is. You've been throwing all this shit. And then when you get like, oh, fuck, that's not the truth. No, that's not the truth. All right, now what do I do? Untangle that motherfucker. Good luck. <laughs> I love that analogy. Right? Yeah. But how does it feel when it starts to get untangled? It's like you're fucking like, woof. Like, you know, it's it's like like you, you feel opening because I think by that time, bro, you're so fucking just just the energy. The energy is mm-hmm. so fucking warped in you. And once you start breathing, <gasps> you just start open and like you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, oh, this feels this feels better. Right. This feels yeah. and then and then you just keep on going. Right. You keep on going. But life does not stop. The shit does not stop. Right. It evolves. It, it, it evolves. Right. And mm-hmm. the fucking problems are still there. The fucking mind games are still there. But you got to just keep it pushing. I love it, man. So let's talk. So you transition through this at home, boys. How does acting come in? How does that new door open up so i've always been a storyteller Mm -hmm. right and and i think when i had the understanding that i was just telling a story Mm -hmm. in a different way that's really where everything um bam just popped up right so let me take it back but you were a rapper before i was a poet i I started writing poetry in jail Mm -hmm. when i was 15 years old right i started right that was kind of transition into raps by the time i'm 18 i start writing raps i start rapping i i'm in the studio rapping right and um and again what is rapping Mm -hmm. what is poetry Mm -hmm. what is acting Mm -hmm. it's telling a story yes that's it it's telling a story right so um that was all th- that was it that was god's gift right yes. we have we got, you have to understand what is your gift i can't do what you could do and you can't do what i could do yes. right because that is god's gift yes. right so i had an understanding of what god's gift was mm-hmm. right um and then when 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 the acting came right and then it was like that understanding like oh this is part of god's gift it's just a different way of telling it yeah you're still telling you're stories. You're still telling you're stories. Narrative. I'm still, I'm still the poet. I'm still the rapper. This right here is telling a story, yes. right? Um, but it, it started like that. Okay. All right. And so first acting gig, what does that do to your your, your confidence? Again, I think it, it, it was being in a setting, right? Uh-huh. Like that was able for you to see yourself different, right? And again, you're at home, boys. You're with, you're already seeing yourself different. Mm-hmm. And then this this tv show comes and they say that hey we 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 want you for that part so it's another outside source letting me see myself different right Mm -hmm. and i think that was the game changer we're like oh you actually want me Mm -hmm. right and like and 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 being able to be open to that and and that was enough right like and it was like and i think it's that like 
if you could believe that I could do it, like how in the fuck can I not believe in myself, Absolutely, right? Yeah. But that's polar opposite of the of the system that I was thought yeah. about myself, right? Yeah. But I think it was that, right? When these fucking fucking <laughs> sh- sh- um, showrunners and directors came into my life at that time, it was Southland, it was Christopher Shulak, yeah. you know, when they were like, hey, Richard, we believe in you. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, thank you, right? Let me do this. Um, and then let, let me start believing in myself now. Mm. So now we're talking about acknowledgement. Yeah. You had grown up the way you grew up. Unacknowledged. Unacknowledged. Right. Family. Right. Society, teachers, law enforcement, probation, right, right, et right. cetera, et cetera. And then you start getting acknowledgement. Right. 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 Father Greg, Brother, acknowledgement. Yeah, right. Other mentors, acknowledgement. Directors, short acknowledgement. Right, right, right. What is what is happening in your consciousness? It's it, it starts rewiring the consciousness. Oh. It starts rewiring it like that, right? Um, but then I have to have it's it's now it's the conflict, right? You nobody is your worst is is your is your biggest enemy but yourself. Oof. So Say that again. Nobody is your wor- is your biggest enemy but yourself. Mm. That's that's it because your mind is not going to stop telling you that you're a piece of shit because for 25 years, the world has told you you're a piece of shit. So you kind of think it now, right? Yeah. But then, so when this fragment, when this when this small percentage starts telling you otherwise, the higher percentage is saying that, no, dog, don't fucking think that. You're still that, right? So now you have to start fucking balancing all that shit out in order to fucking truly believe that you are not a piece of shit. You have to rinse the subconscious. Of all the bullshit. Of all the bullshit, right? And 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 I'm still in the hood, bro. I'm still I'm at homeboys. Homeboys is still fucking there's gang members, right? So the stories are still being told every single day. Yeah. But slowly I am fucking disciplining myself to depart from that, right? Mm-hmm. Um and 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 that bro, I was still active at homeboys, mm-hmm. right? I was still selling dope, right? Mm-hmm. I was still in the hood, mm-hmm. I was still drinking, I was still mm-hmm. going to clubs, right? Mm-hmm. So but but I, I just like, I slowly, I just started just fucking, you know, just trailing off like your, that. Your energy started to change. Right, 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 your right, 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 right. But again, bro, like there was no, like, when, like, I'm a homie at the end of the day, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, like, even though you were my teacher at that time, bro, but like, I didn't, like, I couldn't bounce any of these ideas with, right? You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a gang member, bro. You know, like, mm-hmm. even though we have, Father Greg is amazing, bro. But there's nobody that truly understands what it is to get to 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 get a uh, see a man stabbed on a prison yard in their neck, right? And how like like yeah, we could bounce ideas, but at this at the same time, I had to fucking really internalize and talk to God on mm. my own, bro. Mm. And have that conversation, right? Conversations right. with God. Like what the fuck? What the fuck does this mean? Because I can't talk to nobody about it. I'm I'm like the first one out of homeboys that came out, bro. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. there was no fucking Richard that's like, hey, like an, another actor that was a gang member that I could talk to about these things. I yeah. was the only one. Yeah. You were the first to push through the door. And that's another key thing, bro, because I never had that. And I was like, what does it look like if I had that? Right. right. And that's why, like, that's why my, my, my continuous continuing to be involved with homeboys is, is just organic like that. Right. Like. I was like, damn, how dope it would have been to have somebody like me, right? Fuck it, I'm gonna be that person. And you become that and you person. become that person, right? Yes. So now there's an open door to to this. Yeah, and you keep becoming that, right? Yeah. So it's a trip, bro. So I'm thinking in my head, I'm thinking layers of steps, right? Thirteen steps, thirteen steps to the pyramid, right? The top. So do you think that we're at we're always at certain levels and like you said you started to evolve while you're at homeboys you started to break away from right. selling and all that that as our energy changes it's not the same we just go to different levels of consciousness mm, mm. is that what happens That's it that's it that's it you know we're all looking we're all looking down from the mountain right mm-hmm. and we're all looking at the same area the the sun is hitting from the same thing the air is the same shit Right but some of us are just on higher on a higher part of the mountain than others. Yeah. Yeah, because of our journey. That's it. Just right? because of our journey. We're all going to the same place, right? Yeah. We're all headed there, right? Yeah. But it's that, right? Yeah. But it's all it's going to be in totally different because of our personal journey. Right. Right. All right. So this personal journey, let's let's go to another let's go to another level, mm. right? Because now we're talking homeboys, you're acting, you're moving forward, and then and then life happens, then 
we come back in contact right but our consciousness right still right. dealing with fucked up shit yeah still dealing with crazy it. Yeah, shit yeah but for some reason the reaction right the reaction to problems becomes different right right so what happens in our consciousness where we start you know you right. you know what i'm talking right, about right 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 and i think it's it's that right that handling it the 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 way the system tells you right, right. that fucking Finding yourself a partner, fucking hustling, getting money, mm -hmm. fucking enjoying yourself, right? That we, I realized that that is a fucking lie. That is part of the illusion, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that what brings us back is the spiritual component, right? Okay. Is the medicine, right? Mm -hmm. it, and so let's get very specific about that, right? We, I'm talking about the Native American spirituality, right? I'm talking about all the way from the south of South America all the way up to the north of Alaska, right? Native Americans from the Grand Americans, Turtle right? Island. Turtle Island, right? And we start acknowledging that, right? You on different on, on on different ways we acknowledge it, but that is the that that is the meeting ground for us, right? That is the and, and so it's that, right? I for to be specific, I start going to sweat lodges, mm -hmm. right? I start really. Um, honoring you know the, the the medicine like that and honoring my people right because it's not just in a in a book right it's there, there was there was a physical presence of the ceremony right so i think that is 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 what brought us together in that way and then we 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 see each other at standing rock right at standing rock <laughs> which is the grandest spiritual um thing that's happening in that in that generation right and um it was that right it was it was that where we have an understanding um and it might be a little different but it's it's the same thing we're talking about the same thing right yeah. so let's let's talk about what is termed the red road right what does that mean to you the red road to me is 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 um the spiritual journey of of your native people right mm -hmm. and whatever it, wherever tribe you or you your dna comes from where whether it's the chichimeca the yaki the lakota um mm -hmm. and then bring it's it's bigger than america i think right because the red road could be like african too right yeah. or it could be asian yeah. right like yeah. whatever your spiritual journey your, your your people came wherever your people came from and how they connected to god right, right. where the pyramids came from where the egyptian pyramids came from mm -hmm. giza mm -hmm. and, and and asia like whatever cultural godly connection that is a, a person is trying to attain that in, in these times right yeah that's that we're all humans we're all humans and we come from a, a we, we come from a deep deep source and the deep deep mm. people right mm. spiritual we all come from spiritual pre people whether you're white and you come from the vikings whether you're yeah. the scottish yep. the gaelic bro like yep. whatever the druids whatever freaking um babylon like wherever you're from bro you come from from godly people from eons right that that deep that roots. could that 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 connected to god in a beautiful way right yeah. but because of colonization mm. we have been stripped from that so you okay so Let's roll back two seconds. So colonialism, right? Right. 1451, Doctrine of Discovery. The church gives Europeans that are colonized and the God-given right to take anybody's lands that are Christians, right? Yeah. But what I learned is in 1000, mm. right? Nah. AD. Yeah. They were doing that to all the indigenous yeah, Europeans. The Europeans. They were right. practicing colonization. Right, 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 right. right. They I mastered it by the time they, they got on. Absolutely. And that's why I was always like, oh, snap. The Druids, the Celtics, all those indigenous yeah. people in Europe, yeah. they were straight connected the way our ancestors were connected. Right, right. And that right. we're trying to get connected yeah. to the Red Road, yeah. right? Yeah. So how does that process work? So I, I'm saying that because when we say colonization, then we're talking about the shift of being connected to the earth. Right. We're talking about the shift of being connected to what we eat. Mm. We're talking about the shift yeah. in, in how we see quantum physics or right. the ancestors, right? right? Or right. the elements of everything. And what is the byproduct of that? Well, we, we ended up being taught to pray to a different God, uh -huh. which the stories, I'm not saying Christianity is not real, but the story has been kind of a little bit fabricated. Right, right. The, the the foods that we eat now are all genetically modified. Right. Preservatives, right? Right. Sugars, et cetera. The medicines, right? The medicines are pharmaceuticals, right. which is running the game right now. Right. All this is having detrimental effects on our consciousness as human beings. So I, I say that all to say, as we decolonize, let's talk about what's the medicines like when we're talking about ethnogens, right? right? When we're talking about 
hongos, mm. te, uh, teonanaka, mm. mushrooms, um, right. uh, peyote, right. um, sapo, right. 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 all these things. How do these, as we go down this red road to process and find out these earthbound medicines, uh-huh. what what is the what what is the lesson in us getting connected to those medicines to open up our consciousness? That opening up consciousness, right, is is that that's why they they're still here, right, okay. and that our people sacrifice for those things for those medicines to be here, mm-hmm. right? Because when the when the um, church came. They literally killed our people and because of the power, right? Right. They stopped the sundown ceremony and the sweat lodges and, and you couldn't practice any Native American um ceremony. It was illegal. From, it was illegal to the nineteen seventies. Nineteen seventies, right? And my question is, right, if it wasn't powerful, then why would you stop Oof. it? Speak on it. And, and and that's that that's the biggest you know, the biggest question, right? That kind of got me going, like like, there must be something to this, right? And when you go in there, right, and you pray like that, right? When you become one spirit, one mind, one prayer, right? There is no questioning the feelings and the power that you have after the ceremony, right? Yeah. So, so it's that, right? It's 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 fighting to, and and then the people, our people, had to fight. You know, literally fight in the Americans in the Americas to 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 have those ceremonies again, right? Yeah. And and but where a biggest thing that gets skewed is that is 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 that people have now colonized these medicines, mm. and that is and that's the motherfucker right there, right? Because like it, it that and every all the information that you get on the on the um mushroom ceremonies on the ayahuasca is told from a western frame of thought right and and um and and that's what we need a question right now because it's it, it, it's 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 you are not gonna grow um spiritually you're gonna hurt you're gonna you're gonna yeah. hurt people and that's what's happening right yeah. like you th- when and they've always been here the medicine has always been here right and now um I, I think it's that like the, the the Westerners are 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 grabbing these the, these power sources that have been here since the beginning of time and putting their t- spin on it right yeah. and when you do that bro you're you're, you're not attaining the, the the true power of the medicines right. right yeah and everybody that's speaking on the behalf of this their origins are not from the medicine right their dna is not from the medicine so you're still an outsider to it right yeah. so i think that where we're at in 2020 we haven't even reached the power of what our medicines of what our medicines are and what yeah. they and what they can possibly do for our people right yes. but but we we um we, we talk about the sapito we talk about the, the mushrooms right like these medicines Specifically the sapo, bro. I'm gonna talk about the sapo, the 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 the, the frog from Sonora, Mexico, right? Mm-hmm. From the understanding that we got, that medicine is here is here to heal traumatic experiences, right? And and most people don't know that, right? Um, and I think that it's what a beautiful thing, right? Because everybody, let's talk about America, yeah. has had a traumatic experience, yeah. Either either um Everyone. consciously or subconsciously right yeah. either e- either so it's that right so um i i i i'm a strong believer in it i i practice the medicines right but mm-hmm. i practice them with, with 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 um a genuine um care right and not trying to disrespect yes. right because because if you just go somewhere and you just want to take 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 yeah. Then, then, then you're you're gonna hurt, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because our people, which Western philosophy does not teach, that when you take the medicine, you must take it in a respectful way, right? Yeah. So I think that it's it's a beautiful place to be right now. But there's also a lot of misinformation that's happening with the, with the medicine yeah. and the ceremonies. No, absolutely. I I want to read you this quote, brother, and, and then get your thoughts on it, which I think you you spoke on it. But I want to I want you to hear it, foreigners. They took everything. Mm. Their goal is to extract and absorb everything we have. Mm. Now Mm. they want to take our spirituality, Mm. our wisdom, Mm. using ayahuasca incorrectly. Mm. The main problem with Westerners is in their minds. Mm. Their minds carry a great deal of anxiety and stress. Mm. These problems begin piling up in the body, making it sick. Mm. 
It's an indigenous healer, Walter Lopez. Yeah. It's it, it it's huge, bro. It's huge and you can't like you like I've been presented ayahuasca plenty of times. And for me, when I, when I take ayahuasca, I believe that I will, right? I am gonna go to the land that it comes from. I'm not gonna take it in Silver Lake or in the Hollywood Hills, right? Like because because why? Because I feel that you are not gonna even fully gain the medicine, mm. the, the true experience, bro, because that medicine is a herb, that yeah. medicine is a plant, that yeah. medicine belongs to a sacred land yeah. so it's like trying to take a child and putting him into a, a, a and putting him into another land where his his family you just took that child from his family yeah. and i believe when when you approach the medicine the best way to do it is to approach it in the land that it comes from mm. i love that brother and yeah you know and, yeah. and, 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 and and like and why it's so hard because i'm an american a mexican american that 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 has no teachers bro yeah. You, I mean, it's beautiful to have a brother to bounce information, but at the end yeah. of the day, I'm on my journey, bro. Absolutely. You get what I'm, yeah. And so, like, yeah. I take this to heart. Like, oh, am I going to have a bad trip? No, motherfucker, I might die. I could die, yeah. right? You get with the yeah. wrong person, yep. with the wrong medicine, yep. you can die. Absolutely. And so that's why yeah. I, I, don't, I don't play with this shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're going to alter states of consciousness. That's it, and you might not come back. Yes. If you fuck with the wrong person, yeah. you might not come back. Yeah. So the respect is everything. You have to, bro. Yeah, respect is God, everything. take care of me. God, like, yes. I don't know what's about to happen, but yeah. I'm hurt, and I need you to take care of me, God. Well, that's the thing, brother. It's like, and that's the thing. We, we're using creator, right? It becomes, see, these medicines, and you can speak on this, they connect us to the medicines within ourselves mm. to love ourselves. That's it. That's it. Right? Well, Why did they call the mushrooms when the when the Catholic priest came right. over? Because these fools were using it in in Europe too. Right. Right. Call it the flesh of God. The flesh of God. What is that? The flesh mean? of God. And then you go. So now we we well, you know our Mexican blood, right? Yeah. So the God, the deity of the mushrooms is Xochipilli. Mm. So, so if you know anything about Sochipili, I, I don't. I'm not the encyclopedia of it, but I know enough to to say what I'm gonna say right now. That he had when you look at his statue, what which I've always seen, but I didn't know to what it was until yeah. I started taking the medicines recently. Yeah. Is that he has the peyote on him? He has mm. the mushroom on him. Mm. He has he he has. Um, I'm not. He has like three, four other, bro. I, that we don't even know. Like, there's medicines that we don't even know about, right? Yeah. But according to Sochi Pili, that's he has them on him, and and but also he was not just the deity of of that. Yeah. He was the deity of um fertility, yeah. right? A creativity, yes. So it's much more grander than just um psychedelics, DMT, yet. whatever yeah. you want to yeah. call it, bro, because from our people, which our people lived they lived this shit. They didn't they 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 weren't weakened warriors. They didn't just talk about the shit on a podcast. Yeah. Our people lived this shit, right? Every they day. had they had statues honoring. They had temples honoring. They were the masters of the uh, of the medicine, right? Yeah. And they, not only was it plant-based, but it was also everything else, other things, right? So, yeah. bro, we don't no one's saying that shit. No one's talking about that. Yeah. And it's like, oh, man, the transformation of human consciousness with these medicines, right, is mm. one level. But the other part, as you're saying, because of the respect so the respect, bro. important, right? Yeah. That when you have a medicine holder that has that respect and you're doing it with respect, but you're going in for real reasons. Mm. I was molested as a kid. I was physically go. beaten up yeah. as a kid. I was yeah. shamed. Yeah. I was yeah. whatever yeah. it yeah. is. Whatever, yeah. That these medicines invoke the medicines already in you, mm. whether it's 5-MeO-DMT mm. yeah. or yeah. DMT from my, whatever it is, it's already in us. Right, right. But to be able to come out on the other side healed, mm. right? Mm. We're not talking 20 years in therapy. No. We're talking some of them, like I can only speak from the Sapo perspective. 30 minutes 30 maybe minutes. 20 maybe done 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 and then you're in this state of bliss right and love for yourself mm. so this whole time we've been growing up 20 30 40 50 years mm. with a hole in our hearts mm. seeking love from every damn person in the world addictions in the world right. codependent on right, everything right right then you do this medicine that has been in the earth around the earth in our cultures that was taken away because of colonization mm. It heals us. 
Dale. and gets us into a place where oh I don't have to respond to people anymore or mm. react to them mm. in a negative way now I can sit in the present moment right right and be in the energy to create right 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 that's right. what those medicines that's do that's it they're not that's how come it. nobody's talking that's about it. that that's it that's it bro that no it, it's it's um and and that's what and and that's what the message that we need to put mm. out there right? right like it's it, it's that and that because because people are seeing them from the leaders you know what i'm saying that are the messengers right now right which yeah. are false messengers right yeah. and i think what we're talking about is 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 that's where it's at you know and um and yeah like no one's having these conversations but we're talking i think what i'm hearing you talk about that the, it's ritual and it's ceremony and it's ceremony it's, it's ceremony. not like oh bro let's go trip yeah let's you know let's yeah. do an no it's trip. not it's not because i've been there right, yeah, right? I, i've i've been at raves or i've been at you know where it, it was polar opposite yeah right yeah. so i know that extreme too um but it's that it's that right you must come at it in a respectful ceremony way and that's it right the sun's energy is changing right which means we're going to change that's it where are we going now you, and, in your opinion and in my opinion is it's a beautiful time right, right. um because with quarantine and with covid mm -hmm. um you know, the illusion had been pulled again, right? right? The illusion is in front of us again, right? And you're seeing... <laughs> on steroids. On steroids, right? And you're seeing people for what they are. You see, And for me, the biggest thing... What, what was the biggest thing that I seen was the the, the, the reality of, of, of humanity and society living in fear. Yes. I living in fear, right? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and so you're like, damn, like... Like that? Like, I'm cool. Yeah, you're like, I'm cool. Like, oh, shit. Like, it's now more than ever, like, I am more in depth with the ceremony and more trying to attain that because i don't i don't want to be that right yeah. i'm not that yeah. right and i yeah. will never be that right, right? but like because but you guys listen to fucking the system you guys listen to society and look where it got you you're listening to channel zero yeah and it's fucking you're, you're, you guys are fucking animals right you're fucking not caring about the elderly you're not caring about babies you're not caring you are fucking just living in a fear-based mentality yep. and because of that look at how your actions are right yeah. so yeah. like it's 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 a beautiful time i think right um for me because yeah. now what i did is time to like i couldn't go to pine ridge i couldn't go to sweat lodge but i believe that the ceremony is in within oh, myself I now right it. yeah what does that look like right what is it when your med meditation looks like right what does your prayer look like right what is you just being within yourself right and i think that's the grandest thing right because what i don't want to do and what i don't teach what i try not to teach my child is that don't be a medicine seeker mm. right because if you are just jumping from medicine to medicine to medicine to medicine you are missing the key element and what is that that's the process yes you have to process what the medicine is doing right yes. because if not you're acting like a freaking drug addict yeah. it doesn't matter that you're doing all the earth stuff right yeah. you're, yeah. you're you're just being you're, you're being a crackhead on ayahuasca and on these on the sacreds like that right mm -hmm. and like you're not being because you have to let it work in you mm. to be in the in the physical life, right? How do you you have to let the medicine work so you could be creative? You have so um so it's that though too, right? And I think that has been a great teacher that I haven't had a chance to really do medicines, but it's supposed to be like that, right? Yeah. Let yeah. me be with the sun. Let yes. me be with the moon, right? Let me feel the, the earth. Ocean. Let me really? feel the ocean like that. Yeah. So I I think that that's really where it's at right now. Yeah. Um. You know what's a trip, bro, is that the medicines, what they've done for me, especially in this time. So you bring up fear. Right. right? United States is a Machiavellian society, mm. right? Machiavelli, uh, Italian philosopher with the prince, I think. Right. Said, uh, wrote, what were the best ways to control a society, mm. right? Mm. Through mm. fear. That's it. Or through love. Right. right, right, right. And to experience COVID and the illusion of all the stuff that's being you know, just the, 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 the changing of the physical consciousness that's happening right. before our eyes, right? And how we live and how we work. You see the fear, like you said, right? Mm. Which the fear by people being isolated lowers the immune system. Right. Right? Takes immunoglobulin G, which is the main protein, G1, I think, um, or A, out of your system, which mm. gets you sick. Mm. So everything they're telling us to do actually is lowers more, our yeah, immune yeah, system, yeah, which yeah. makes us more susceptible to getting sick. Right? right, right. But 
back to the medicines, which gets us into a place of the present where mm. we're living in pure mm. love, mm. Mm. which raises right because right. our thoughts become it's it's placebo, it's right. positive, right. it's not and nocebo. And it takes the shit out. Bro. Yes, like, I've been doing the out mind. of the body. I, I, it takes, and I think the biggest thing I could speak on the mushroom ceremony, bro. The mushroom ceremony, it for me, it's just a detox of the shit, bro. It's a fucking boom. Yes. Like that is not needed, bro. Yeah. Fucking the news is not needed. COVID is not needed. It it let it let it rest where it rests, but it should not rest in my home. Yeah. It should not rest in my mind. Yes. You know, and I think that's like it's that's what the ceremony does. Yeah. And, and, and also, bro, I think like like understanding that we don't know shit. Yes. Again, back to the more I know, the, the more, more I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but we don't know shit, right, bro? <laughs> because we are only given what the books give us, yes. right? But what happened before that? What happened before that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you really fucking know, right? And we and, and we don't know shit. We, and everything we're based in society right now, bro. Yeah. You're fucking. You're you're rolling from the the civil rights to the to fifty years, bro. But your human existence is from eons. It's too hard to fathom that, right? But that is the reality, right? So what what like what are we really fucking talking about? What are what are we really trying to discover or fucking trying to analyze, right? And and I think no one's really having that conversation, right? And and I don't know where to but I know that it's real, right? And Absolutely. I'm uh, and I'm honoring that right yes. now. Yeah. Well, it's the, the medicine is inside. Mm. Right? I mean, I don't know for you, but for me, it was the understanding that we're nothing more than a reflection of creator. Mm, mm. We are creator. Yeah. But when we live in fear, no, your vibration has completely and, shifted. And also this, bro, like for whatever fucking reason, us three sitting here, right? Mm -hmm. now, right? Life is a motherfucking gift. Mm. Say that again. Life is a motherfucking gift. That's gratitude, brother. Bro. You know what I'm saying? Look at you, bro. How blessed are you? Have all your toes, all your fingers, your heart working, no fucking deformities, bro. How? Because there's people like that are yes, here right now, I right? I don't, know, I don't know that. I, I don't know that existence. Yeah. But like, yeah. I am grateful that everything yeah. is here, bro. Yeah. What the? F like. And the, bro, what you're saying is like the other part of the, the medicines and the red road and being connected to our culture is our heart chakra mm. opens up. Mm. I can't drive in LA without feeling something every time I see an elder or a young homie or a young woman on the street mm. living just camped up in yeah. the corner bed little you know TV yeah. on, mm. the street. on the street on the street on so the street. we talk Armageddon we talk about you know uh, the book of revelations if you're into the Bible, they're already living in it they're in it bro right but when we have open heart right right then we can love mm. no matter who it is no matter who it is and that's the other thing i mean like i always say it is sana um or the you know love heals yeah right because love does heal it does but that was the lie that they never yeah they didn't yeah. tell us that no they, they didn't fear, tell make people fear you right right right, right and right. that will get you to next i was like yeah Dude, that's such bullshit right 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 the ability for us to love the ability to us overcome all those obstacles mm. and get to that place mm. when we can be in chaos supposedly mm. right mm. controlling the mind knowing that <sighs> right i'm connected to my breath mm. oh snap mm. my breath which means in sanskrit spirit connects me to creator mm. but when i'm in fear my breath shortens, shortens. yeah yeah that's what the sapito taught me is how right. to breathe right Right. I've been able to walk, witness people's stomachs get mm. connected to the breath. Mm. Mm. To realize like, oh snap, the medicine is our breath. The mm. medicine is mm. in our heart. Right. The medicine is inside me. Right. Right. Oh snap. Right. That was the colonizing part. Right. You right. don't have Taking the medicine. You, you got to take the medicine. You got to take aspirin when you have a headache. Right. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's external. It's external. Yeah. But everything's internal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, brother, man. We, Thank we, you, bro. Thank no, you. No, man. I, listen, you brought up the gratitude. Mm. We don't have to write our gratitude list down. Nah. We just say it. Live it. Live, Live it. it. <laughs> it's in our uh, creator hears all of our thoughts. Mm, mm, right? Mm, mm. So I have so much gratitude for you, brother, mm, for your you, life, 
for your energy, for your love that you spread, not only with me and your, your friends and your family, but everywhere you go, you bring it, brother. Mm. And I'm very blessed to be part of this clan. I told you, I texted you yesterday. Oh, we plan to be here. That's it. Eons. We, we, eons. We, 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 we yeah, have symbols we, we on made our bodies. Made a to be like, oh, snap. We made a okay. promise. We made a promise thousands yeah, of years thousands ago of to years be ago. back here in I this time that, period. I believe that, bro. I believe that. Yeah, I believe it too. Yeah. Listen, I want to ask you for that young person or that adult, that man, that woman, that transgender, whatever, whoever's out there mm. listening, what does your heart say to them right now? To believe that they are much greater than what people told them they are. Right? And and it's, it's, you know, going back to Father Greg, that you are not your worst mistake. You know, and yeah, it's, it's, it's like yeah just to keep that belief you know and 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 just keep it pushing like that right and and then rewind it right if you need this rewind it right and listen and listen to it right and, and there's a lot that we talked about on, on this piece but like you know you are love right like that's that's really what you know i i think that we're we're manifesting right love yeah. right that you are love i am love you are love yeah El amor sana. Yeah, yeah. Love heals, bro. That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, where can people catch you? Social uh, media? Yeah. Handle? In, yeah. Richard Cabral official, Instagram. Um, and that's like that. That's like the go-to spot, right? Like everything else. It's for third dimensional content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, catch me in the dreams, right? Catch yeah, me on man. a ceremony. And, 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 and catch uh, Richard and I in a van coming to a that's neighborhood it. soon. That's it, bro. That's to it. Bring, we're, uh, we're gonna we're gonna bring it, bro. All right. Yeah. The, the journey has become uh, now. <laughs> we're on the journey now. This is the Room of Knowledge. Mm. I'm Fidel Rodriguez with Richard Cabral. May your ancestors continue to guide you, mm. and we'll see you soon. That's it. Oh. Fidel Rodriguez, The Room of Knowledge.